so so soon we will be in Pergamum. The visit will take about an hour, I would say. We will stop at the entrance of the archaeological site, then we will take the cable car, okay? That's like an eight minutes, actually six minutes ride of cable car until we arrive to the top. When we go to the top, we will go to the archaeological site and we will walk a little bit. We have to climb up. It's not very steep, okay? It's just like a regular walk. Until we get to the Acropolis, there I will make some explanations and I will show you the points where you can take some pictures. When we're walking towards the Acropolis, I will also show you the place of the Altar of Zeus, which is referred as the Throne of Satan in the leather, okay? You will not see that building itself because it's not in Turkey, it's in Berlin, but you will see the area that it was built upon once we go there. Then we will leave and continue to Theatira, approximately one hour, one hour, 15 minutes drive. For lunch, me and the driver, we decided to order some pizzas. They will bring us directly to the Pergamum. Are you interested? Would you like some pizzas? Yeah, yeah, Pepperoni, good. margarita, Mexican, barbecue chicken. They have a Domino's actually at the city center. <laughs> so we'll just order some pizzas for us. If you also have some orders, we can help you with that, okay? Little pizzas, like the smallest sized, is like this big. They're beginning about 200 Turkish Liras. The regular ones, 3, 350. Biggest one, 4, 400, 450. Okay, so it depends what would you like to order. Before we enter to Pergamum, I will ask you again. Okay, so we can note down your orders and on our way to the theater, we can just have some pizzas in the bus. Oh, that sounds good. <laughs> That's very nice. Yeah, why not? It's lunch. Lunch is lunch. Um, what time is it right now? That would be approximately 12, 15, 12, 30. Okay, at that hour, if you would like to have some pizzas, we will directly, or like, we will find them in the bus once we finish the visit of Pergamon with you. Okay, the driver will help us. He knows something, who works at Domino's in Pergamon. He just told me and I was like, yeah, we want some pizzas. So <laughs> it was a nice coincidence. So. Um, once we go to the Pergamum, you're gonna find one of the most fascinating archaeological sites of Turkey. It's a pity that the German people took almost the entire city and put it to Berlin. If you go to Berlin today, you will find this museum of Pergamum, which has the altar, a lot of statues and stuff like that. And they found this place by coincidence, actually. In 1850s, the Ottoman people, I told you about this period of westernization, right? They wanted to construct some railroads all around Asia Minor in order to facilitate the commercial activity and exportation of some Ottoman products. They did not have any technology to do that, so they sold the entire thing to a German company. Germans came here in order to put some railroads. In order to put some railroads, they had to do some excavations, and that is how they found Pergamum. Wow. Okay? So the German engineers was excavating in the area in order to put the railroad. They came by to some important Roman area statues and they immediately called the German authorities in Berlin and letting them know, particularly the Faculty of Archaeology, to come here and conduct some excavations. So at the end of the 19th century, German archaeologists came here in order to excavate the city of Pergamum. They found lots of things. They reconstructed some temples. So the area is not that empty, of course. You're gonna see some great temples, a nice theater in other parts of interest. But the most rich part of Pergamum is right now located in a museum in Berlin. Okay, and I would say that in the Asia Minor, after Ephesus, the second most important city would probably be Pergamum, what you're visiting. This is a city which was constructed during the Hellenic times, that means 3rd century BC, as you already know. Um, as I previously explained, after the death of Alexander the Great, some of the benefactors, some of his former soldiers, came to the different parts of his empire and found these smaller empires. One of his soldiers named Lysimachos came to the area of Pergamum and Ephesus and he started building up some cities over here. So we know that for the first time in the 3rd century BC, they put a settlement on the place that we will visit right now. Um, you will realize that Pergamum is quite far away from the Aegean Sea and there are no rivers. So it's kind of located in a strange place because Pergamum was never designed as a city. It was designed as a fortress that would function like a bank. Okay, this Lysimachus, one of the soldiers of Alexander the Great, 
he had large amounts of money. We're talking about gold coins, and actually he initially constructed Pergamum as a safe place where he can guard the money. Once we go there, you will see that it's quite a high point, and you would see all around you, just like that gold castle we passed in Ephesus. It was a very nice place of control. That's why he thought that that would be the convenient place to put his money, all of his money, actually. After Lucimacos, his descendants came into the city in order to govern the areas. And you will see that after the 3rd century BC, slowly, Greek people started immigrating to Pergamum and constructing a lot of temples, marketplaces, and many other things of value. It gained a lot of prominence as a cult center during the Roman times. Beginning from 1st century BC, you would find a big Roman city in Pergamum. Not as big as Ephesus, but still it used to have significant numbers. Yesterday we told you that Ephesus approximately had 250,000 residents. In Pergamum it's about 150,000. One hundred fifty thousand is still good, but it was a very famous cult center, and people used to come here in order to practice any kind of religions. Okay, we will see some historical reflections about this in the letter to Pergamon by the letter written by Joan. So I I like this Mexican podcaster that I listen a lot who talks about seven churches, and he usually says that Pergamon was the Las Vegas of the ancient oh. times which would be a correct definition because people all around from all around the roman world used to come here just in order to enjoy the facilities that the city offered okay so during the roman times if you visited pergamum and if you want fertility you would go to the temple of artemis if you wanted to know your future you would visit a temple dedicated to apollo if you want to get married you would visit it you would visit another temple of artemis too um, if you wanted to just drink some wine and have some fun, you would go to the temple of Dionysus. Um, Egyptian religion, Iranian religion, different kind of religions were practiced. And this Roman elite class, they really loved this exotic religion. So they would come here in order to visit those temples. Okay, So Pergamum really looks like the Las Vegas of the ancient world. And if you walked in the streets of Pergamum in the first century, when Christianity is also prominent here in the city, you would find a lot of open-air temples when they were performing sacrifices of all sorts of animal, okay? So the type of sacrifice usually depends on the cult of the god or goddess. If you're trying to sacrifice something to the Dionysus, the Greek god of theater and wine, like leaving a plate of fruits to the temple would be sufficient. But if you're worshiping, let's say, Athena, a goddess that is related to war, to victory, to weaponry, actually, you would probably need to sacrifice some goats, sheep, cows. During the cult of Artemis, the sacrifice of pigeons was quite common. So imagine the Zepanir temples that you would see on the road, and people are basically cooking the sacrifices all around the city. Okay. Once we read the letter to the Pergamum, you will understand that the conception of this sacrifice meat is a huge problem in the city between the Christian communities and we have some historical references to this topic. So keep in mind that this city was quite rich in different cults and people used to come here in order to practice religion. But for Roman people, religion is not about dedication and spirituality. It's a highly commercial business, okay? If you go to a temple, you can find a change office. You can find a bank you would find facilities. If you go to the Roman Agora, there will be lots of services available. So, of course, these are cult centers, but at the same time, they're selling a different kind of products and services inside, okay? <coughs> so Pergamon possesses these characteristics, actually. We know that a huge earthquake destroyed the city in the second century AD. When we come to the Byzantine times, you can see that Pergamon was shrinking in size, just becoming the small and small village. And at the last, ultimately, it was abandoned by the Greek people around 8th century. When Turkish people came here, they also used the material of the city in order to construct mosques. Today, it's just a small neighborhood of Izmir, actually, approximately maybe 250,000 of people live in Pergamon. The city survives in tourism. 
and also some universities have their tourism faculties in the city so there are lots of students living in modern Pergamon once we go to the ancient part of the city once we go up with the cable car you will also have the spectacular view of entire modern Pergamon where you would see in detail can you see a hill on the left yeah. that is Pergamon if you pay attention on top of it you will see some ruins right now we are going there okay in order to climb up to that height we're going to use the cable car each cable car has capacity for eight people uh, but you don't have to go in eight like it can be three four five it doesn't matter you will see that there are always passing cable cars you can grab any of them once you arrive to the top okay please wait for the rest of the group we will use our tickets in order to go in in the entrance you will see some shops please do not go into the shops first we will visit the museum then i will give you some free time if you want to see the products they sell lots of parchment here if you're interested in the material like original lamb leather parchment you can find some shops that sells it also you're going to find lots of maps and books in english about pergamum books in english about seven churches or journeys of paul so if you're interested in pergamum you would also find a nice collection so what kind of pizza do you want guys